The lines of power are set to shift at City Hall. In what is a complicated and often shrouded process that happens every 10 years after the U.S. Census, new ward maps must be drawn and it could change the shape of the Chicago City Council. Amanda Venicky joins us now with more on where this process stands. Amanda, lots of remapping going on after the census. Yeah, Brandis, it is a year for new maps everywhere. There's already a new map for Illinois House and Senate districts, and then the state legislature is in charge of drawing new congressional boundaries, but they're putting that duty off until fall. Chicago is under its own timeline, and in the case of the city, it is still relatively early. Still, Alderman Roberto Maldonado says things are happening. Definitely discussions have started. Uh, at this point, um, um, we still do not have the map room. Um, the city is in the process of acquisition of the software so that we can start um, <clears throat> drawing the potential maps uh, that we all would want to have. Now, beer aficionados may know Map Room is a longtime bar in Bucktown, but that is not what Maldonado means. Rather, this is a room, a space that is equipped with a computer, maybe a few. I don't know. I've never been in one, and that's really a big point in all of this because they are, per unofficial rule, closed to the public, but these are computers equipped with specialized map-making software. Now, the law does leave it to current members of Chicago City Council to draw future maps of wards, wards that of course they may well be running in. Maldonado says older people are in early talks about what they want the outcome, what they want that map to look like. He's a member of the Latino caucus and says that there is a chance of picking up one, maybe two more wards that have a majority of Latino residents. He says the Latino caucus is determined to present a united front. I'm going to be looking out first and foremost for the interest of the Latino community at large in the city of Chicago, so that we can really and truly get a fair, a fair map, not, not, not like we did 10 years ago. We were short changed 10 years ago by the previous mayor at the time, Mayor Emanuel. We would not allow that to happen again. He says that he is going to engage with constituents, with local stakeholders as negotiations progress. And then when a map is drafted, the public will have a chance to give input. But there is a commission totally separate from the city council that is taking a more preemptive and more transparent approach. Last week, beginning holding a series of meetings, some virtual, others are going to be hybrid. All of these have a sign language and a Spanish interpreter option that is seeking public input on the new map. The Chicago Advisory Redistricting Commission plans to use all of this public feedback coupled with census data once it arrives in mid-August to come up with a map proposal of its own. The group Change Illinois helped to organize this commission and Chandra Van Dyke is the Chicago Project manager. We believe it should be an independent process where residents have uh, some power in it, right? Some voice in it. Residents should be a part of this process and it shouldn't be done in a back room that typically uh, that room doesn't involve every alder either, which means there is a lack of representation. There is a voice missing at the table when those decisions are being made for the, the, the greater public. But just who is on this commission, she says that in the spring, some 430 people submitted applications to be part of it. And then leaders, and you can learn who, on the website chicagoswords.org, picked 13. And like says, they were chosen with a mindset toward reflecting Chicago's geographic, age, and racial diversity. And then the goal is to get a map drawn by fall, get more public input on it, make revisions, and then hope that at least 10 members of the city council will give it wings. A Portage Park resident was one of the few who gave public testimony at a virtual meeting held last night. Dan Butterworth says he lives in the 38th ward, but with so many other wards nearby, he says the various alder people who represent the area often pass the buck. If I walk two blocks from my house or east, I'm actually in the 45th ward. Uh, a ward I might add is full of energy, of vibrancy. If I walk six blocks south from there, I'm in the 36th ward. If I got two more blocks, I'm in the 30th ward. Unless, of course, I'm on the west side of the street, then I'm actually in the 31st ward. 
And Ike says that this is the sort of input from the public that should be taken into consideration. And it is people who live in these spaces every day who knows boundaries and understands the territories in their communities and how their communities function. And that's why it's important to have their voices so that we don't put people in a situation where we're, we're putting lines in the middle of their communities, which splinter things in a way that they can't come together and organize. They can't come together and get resources. They can't advocate for better things in their community because they have to go to four, three, four, two representatives who sends them in circles but Alderman Maldonado says that he has been in politics long enough to know that everyone has an agenda. He says map making should stay in under the city council's control, and he expects that Alder people will reach a compromise on a new map before December. I don't believe in independent commissions because independent commissions, by definition, should be independent. They won't be independent. Uh, those members will be appointed by somebody. Um, they will respond to somebody. And I'm, I'm not naive enough that there would really be people coming and being dropped by, uh, from heaven into this so-called independent condition that nobody knows who they are. And they're going to come with the perfect uh, ideal configuration of 50 wards. Now, as I mentioned, going back to the state level, Illinois Democrats did pass a law that establishes new boundaries for state legislative districts, but it may not actually be the final map. It is facing two lawsuits. One is from Republicans, the other from the Mexican American Legal Defense and Education Fund. So we'll be watching that. Brandis, back to you. Amanda, thank you.